Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we take for a spin a new little plane I found in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I must confess, I think I'm in love. This plane has everything I could ask for. It has personality, it's powerful, it has a wide range of navigation options and it has a retro look. Ladies and gents, I present to you A2A Simulations Piper Comanche 250 done with their new external aerodynamics engine called AccuSim 2.0. This is the first aircraft done with this new engine because their president Scott has one. I will not list all features of this aircraft because many YouTubers, some of which are pilots, did it 4 months ago when this was released. I'll just say this aircraft reminds me of Hitler's F-14 Tomcat in DCS. Such attention to detail, care and love was put into this and it simply puts to shame most other add-on developers. And this aircraft has exactly what I was complaining about in the last episode. So Nuke Enabler, if you watch this, I didn't forget, will give FS Realistic a go once I hope in some other aircraft, in which I don't like the feedback that's programmed into it during flight or on the ground, but I don't think I need it for this one. Actually no idea if it works on other than the default aircraft. The Comanche has all kinds of audio and visual feedback when you are on the ground or in the air. I will touch on those when the time comes, but I'm so pumped, I want to talk about everything I like from the intro. So enough rambling, let's start this baby up. This time around I'll use checklists. I know I said that I don't like them, but this plane makes you want to fly it correctly and leave it in a good state. Because everything persists, if you forget something powered or switched on, it will be in the same state next time you log in fuel and oil state, engine wear and tear, etc. So I'll follow some of them, not everything, but I will make sure I do the important bits. I'll take the wheel chocks, tie downs, pitot covers and controls lock off directly from the tablet. Then proceed with the before engine start checklist. Rotating beacon needs to be on, everything else is fine. Then I switch to engine start. Since I used the left tank on my last flight, I think I'm going to switch to the right one for now. The probe fully forward, mixture rich, throttle cracked, master switch on, fuel pump on and the fuel pressure is rising. Because fuel pressure starts dropping after you turn the pump off, I leave it on until after I prime the engine. I think most people turn it off before that. Now I turn it off then the magnetos to both and attempt to start the engine. All pressure is looking good, the battery is charging. Nice. Then the taxi checklist. I jump straight to the brakes test before I move out. I enable everything in the menus and crank the options to the max. So airport personnel, vehicles, traffic in the air and on the ground, part, airplanes, everything. Because I noticed in my previous videos the airports look a bit uh, sad. Oh and look I teleported to the runway. I'm doing run up checklist to only to increase the cylinder temperatures a bit, since they don't get into the green otherwise. I know, I know, I shouldn't do it here, but you don't want to know how I got to the runway. Throttle needs to be around 2000 RPM, engine instruments are indicating normal values. Then 
they need to cycle the probe three times. The RPM drops to around 1000 RPM when you do that. Okay, okay, I didn't, I didn't want to leave this in, but for transparency's sake, here we go. I got lost. <laughs> and I entered the gravel road, in, in, to the grass and all kinds of bushes at this end of the runway. So don't judge me, okay? This is not how I usually taxi, but I didn't bother to look at this airport's diagram beforehand. And took a wrong turn. Where was I? Yeah, the before takeoff checklist. Elevator trim is neutral. The control surfaces are okay. Mixture rich, fuel pump on, and I think we are good to go. Parking brake off. You can notice the firefighters on the runway. But that doesn't matter, there, there is plenty of room to go around. See you firefighters, thank you. Oh wow, watch and listen to the feedback from the runway. It's so cool. And we are off. At around 90-95 knots. This was with no flaps by the way. I'm sure that with the correct configuration you can take off from pretty short strips with this baby. Positive rate of climb, I can retract landing gears. I turn as I want to intercept the GPS if I can. If not, I will just use heading mode with altitude hold. But I'll try. So it's time to turn the autopilot on. Well, all the LEDs are on, it initializes. And it's ready. I'm going into heading mode while I want to get on top of my line. But we'll try the high mode straight away because I think I'm going more or less on top of the magenta line there. The low and high autopilot modes need you to be going below 5 degrees angle and have a deviation of about a nautical mile from your course in order to intercept it. Or so I gathered from the video I watched before flying this. I reduce the prop a bit then pull the mixture just a tiny bit. I'm not going to do the correct leaning of the engine by the way because that involves basic math and yeah, I'm doing it by ear. It seems the autopilot isn't catching it. Maybe I am doing something wrong. I have no clue. We'll probably change it to heading mode and that's it. We'll fly this many more times for sure. I have time to learn its systems. As I reach the 4000 feet mark, I decide it's a good altitude and prepare to engage the altitude hold function. But before that I need to level out and trim the airplane as best as I can. And then I did it, it's, it's so easy. I didn't. When that happens, it lets you know you need to trim it even more, uh, as this autopilot doesn't have pitch authority. So a bit of nose down should do the trick. There you go.
it's a beautiful aircraft it's simply beautiful want me want me to show you the only bug i found in, on this plane what is this almost makes the aircraft unflyable. I'm kidding of course, uh, I don't care about this, just found it funny. As the cabin temperature is pretty low, I start to search the temp controls. Check this out. Unlike with the windows, this cabin vents sounds are additive. Pretty cool stuff. Having some time to kill, I take a closer look around the cockpit. Everything looks cool with no wasted texture space. If you zoom in and stuff, it still looks cool, but I don't look at, at a panel that takes a huge chunk from a texture. I really like that. Devs did even some prioritization when UV mapping, because it seems more details are around the places your eyes will be most of the time, so that's not the ceiling. We are magically 10 nautical miles or so from our destination. I start the fuel pump, but I guess I did it prematurely as we are going to circle the airfield a bit due to traffic. Mixture goes in fully, so I don't forget that. Hey, look, an airliner. I'm pretty sure I have no business being here with this guy, but what can you do? Landing gear is down, I guess he is going to land. Oh man, th this game is so beautiful. This is one of the reasons I keep coming back to it and keep uh, wanting to fly. It's just a joy to fly around the world. Ah, so yeah, we are going around, I don't want to land at the same time as that guy, as that would make this video very unprofessional. By the way, I feel the need to repeat this every video. I'm just an enthusiast, I don't fly airplanes. Shocking, I know. Being pretty low, I want to stay around 800 feet and I trim the plane a bit, noticing I'm way below that. Turning around, I see another airliner going to land, but this time I will land also. I don't care, because I think the game will keep spawning these planes forever if I keep circling the airport. So you better clear the runway fast, my guy, because I'm coming in hot. I start turning and I end up going wide, but it's okay, I got this. Okay, not my worst, but not the best landing I had. Oh, again, listen listen to the sounds and this camera shake. It's just perfect.
while I'm trying to shut down this like a normal human being, so I leave the plane as I would like to find it, I'll give you my final thoughts on the product. I see no reason for anyone to fly something else for a while after you first set foot in this one, especially the default general aviation aircraft that come with the sim. Unless you really want a glass cockpit and a potent autopilot that is. The aircraft looks very good, sounds great and is stable and precise. You can trim this baby to fly exactly how you want it to fly. The included tablet has a lot of cool features like the engine page for example. What else can I say, the only blunder is the price and the fact that you can't get it from the marketplace. So I have no idea if this will be Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 compatible and that would be a shame. In the next leg around Finland I think I will fly the FlySimware Cessna 414 Chancellor, another plane that I absolutely love. For any tips regarding my flying, editing, volume, image quality and whatnot, use the comments as I read them all. The perk of a small channel, you can read all comments and interact with everyone. Until then, take care and see ya.